Baruch here with GenConnect.com and I'm joined today by Ambassador Nicholas Burns who is now a professor at the Harvard Kennedy School. Thanks so much for being here, sir. Great to be with you. I'm liking that we're making this a bit of an annual That's right, Aspen second, tradition. second year in a row. Well, hopefully you'll come back next year. Now, now the pressure's on. <laughs> what do you think right now are the biggest challenges that we're facing as a country beyond our borders? Well, first, if you're a young person and you're thinking about your life and career, it's the most extraordinary time in a way in human history because there's seven billion people in the world everybody's connected for the first time. There'll be two billion people on the internet now, there are now, there'll be a multiple of that ten years from now. And really the fate of those seven billion people is connected for the first time. You think about the big challenge of climate change for, for your generation and my generation. We've got to do something to deal with that right. and mitigate the damage to our environment. Got to do something about trafficking of women and children, drug and crime cartels, nuclear proliferation. These are issues that face every person on earth in 195 countries, it connects the world in a way that the world's never been connected before. That's number one. Mm. Number two, I think if you're American, you've got to look at China. Second largest economy, it's going to be the second greatest power in the world in terms of military power, political power, economic influence. We're going to have to learn to live with China, work with China, engage China. If I were in high school, college, or going out to Harvard Business School, I'd think about learning Mandarin. Right. And I think about an internship in China because if you're going to be in business, if you're going to be in the arts, if you're going to be in politics or government, I was in government, you have to understand the Chinese and be able to work with them. Because if we clash, it's going to be catastrophic for the rest of the world. If we can learn to work together, it can be reinforcing for the rest of the world. So I think those challenges, the transnational challenges like climate and China, I think for your generation, the biggest issues. Richard Haas from the Council on Foreign Relations just wrote a book called Foreign Policy Begins at Home, saying yes. we need to take a focus on what's going on within our borders. Right. What do you think? I think he's right. He's a good friend, so I'm a little bit biased. So you better say he's right. Exactly. <laughs> but I think he's right in this respect. Any country's power is really a function of our ability to be stable and productive at home. So, for instance, we can't feel this first-class military that we have unless we've got a stable economy. We can't begin to meet the challenge of climate change unless we've got our budget balance, we've got tax revenues to invest in renewables and to find clean coal technology and electric cars. Right. And all that takes money. So if you're not stable at home, you're not going to be effective overseas. I think Richard's argument is very sound on that point. Let's hope he's watching that. I hope he is too. Where do you think that social media falls into the, entire, into the international landscape. How has that, over the last decade, really affected our ability uh, to, to really be diplomats around the you world? You know, I, I, it's interesting. We, I, we, my daughter Caroline and I have been to three social media events today. We just saw Dick Costello, the founder of Oh, Twitter, yeah, of course. Who is great. And I wouldn't say that social media is driving history, but I think it's facilitating people understanding that we're all in one world. So think of the demonstrations in Tunisia for right. freedom in 2011. Think of Tahrir Square in Cairo in January and February of that year. Social media didn't create the revolution, but it enhanced the revolution. It got people together who normally might not talk to each other, and it got around the state. It got around, in this case, an authoritarian dictatorship that was trying to put those rides down. So I think it's incredibly important, but more than just those examples, the ability of poor people uh, in lesser developed countries to be able to connect all around the world, to think of the educational power in that uh, is really quite inspiring. So, you know, I'm probably, uh, I'm not someone who is current on all social media, but I recognize that it's, port its importance. My daughter, Caroline, insisted I got on Twitter, <laughs> so I'm not on Twitter. That's a good decision. At our Nicholas Burns. At our Nicholas Burns. <laughs> professor Burns, thank you so much. Thanks very much. And for more with Ambassador and Professor Nicholas Burns, be sure to check out GenConnect.com and at, at our Nicholas Burns.